Okay, good evening to all of you. Welcome to our class for today. And <clears throat> the last time we met, uh, we were discussing on cost of capital, okay, and how we ought to present uh, or have our presentation, okay, in the case uh, of section C question, okay, how do we present our work uh, if we are dealing with section C question, okay, I think we went through uh, and discussed how you can present your work in the Excel, okay, I presuppose that you have done that assignment and you have sent it to me, okay, thank you for that. Okay, so today I would want us to discuss, okay, a bit of still financing decision, okay, uh, on dividend decision okay on the company dividend policy okay uh, company dividend uh, policy <coughs> now so in this topic it's simply okay trying to uh determine okay uh how do company pay their dividend okay uh when it comes to the payment of dividend okay first of all what is dividend okay uh, now dividend is any distribution that the company do make okay uh, to its shareholder, to its owners, okay, in whatever format that dividend shall take, okay, be it being form of uh, extra shares, uh, be it being form of um, extra free shares, or be it being form of uh, actual cash transfer, okay, from the company uh, to those shareholders, okay, uh, be it being form of actual, okay, uh, assets transfer, okay, uh, physical asset transfer, okay. So in whatever format the distribution shall take, okay. Uh, so any transfer of money, okay, from the company to the equity shareholders, okay, is deemed or it is deemed to be a uh, dividend, okay. The next thing is to tell me therefore, okay. Now, how in what format is the company, okay? So we, we may want to ask a question, in what format uh, shall we as a company pay this dividend, okay, or how this distribution, okay? Uh, as we just mentioned, should we pay for cash, okay? And of course, you need to, you need to uh, support your decision is if you're getting paid for cash, okay? Do you have enough cash reserves to be able to pay this dividend, okay? Uh, if you're going to pay bonus shares, okay? How would the market take that decision uh, to pay the dividend if more bonus shares, okay? More what we we'll call uh, the script dividend, okay? How is the market going to react to uh, your decision, okay? So, of course, all those need to be supported, okay, by, uh, you need to get to know the reason, okay, behind why are we paying the dividend, okay, so you need to justify, okay, why we are paying the dividend, on what, on course, what format is this deal going to take, okay, should we pay the cash, should we pay the bonus, uh, should we pay uh, cash, uh, should we pay the dividend in form of actual asset distribution, okay, so, what format are you going to take, okay? Or what is going to be, uh, or how do we pay the dividend in short, okay? How do we pay the dividend, okay? What is going to be the method of paying the dividend, okay? As should we take as a company, okay? As I mentioned, of course, you need to justify, okay? As why you pay the dividend, okay? You need to have uh, a rationale as to why you're paying the dividend, okay? Why are you paying the dividend, okay? So you need to justify uh, the decision behind the company, saying that you're going to pay the dividend to the company shareholders, okay? So you need to be just, need to be just fine, okay? You need to just find the decision as to why you pay the dividend, okay? Next thing is, so first is how to pay the dividend. Uh, next, of course, is to justify why you pay the dividend, okay? And the other thing could be, when do you pay this, this dividend, okay? You may want to uh, make a decision as to when do you pay the dividend, okay? Uh, generally, dividend can take two for can take uh, uh, the period dividend can occur uh, either in between the year, or to, we shall be referring to as uh, the interim dividend. Okay, or it can occur while the company is preparing its final financials. At the, at the company GM, okay, the company can declare and say that we are out of the result we have just obtained for that year, for this year. Okay, uh, we shall pay a dividend of know, let's say uh, two shillings per uh, two shillings per share. Okay, so this is being paid at the year end. Okay. Okay, they mostly that will be declared during the AGM, the annual general meeting. Okay, so any other dividend paid in between the year, okay, then it, this will refer to as the interim dividend. Okay, so should we pay the interim and not final? Should we pay only the final or not and, and not the interim? Or should we pay both? Okay, an interim dividend as well as a final dividend. Okay, so you as a management, okay, you are the one who's going to come up with those policies, okay, as to when you can pay the dividend. Okay, how much you pay the dividend, when you pay the dividend, okay. As well as you may also want to consider, okay, when we are going to pay this dividend, okay, are we going to contravene, okay, 
any of our prior agreements we may be having with you know, shareholders, for example, but we also with the holders, okay? If we pay this dividend, okay, are we going to be contravening uh, one of our earlier provisions, one of our earlier agreement we had uh, with the holders, okay? So you may want to check, okay, what is going to be the implication, okay, of us paying this dividend on the company existing uh, agreements, okay? Uh, what is going to be the implication it has on the company uh, gearing, okay? Is it going to increase our debt to equity ratio? What is going to be the impact, okay, of us paying this dividend or the company financial risk? Okay, so all these as management, you are the one who is going to come up with those policy. Okay, so all those policies for buying, okay, when to pay the dividend, uh, how much to pay the dividend. Okay, the other decision is how much do you pay the dividend. Okay, so that, the other thing uh, to take note of is how much do you pay the dividend. Okay, not how, okay, but how much. Uh, so here is should we pay if last year we paid uh, let's say two point one dollars per share as the dividend. Okay, should we increase it from two point one to two point five? Okay. Uh, you need to get to know the start, okay, just fine, okay, as to why you would want to have an increase in dividend, or even if if it is a case of a decrease, okay, then you may want to maybe make an announcement, okay, to the shareholder, okay, inform them in advance, okay, you don't want to have some negative uh, responses from them, okay, out of because of the policy you're adopting, okay, uh, how much dividend do we pay there for, okay, get to know that, get to know that, okay, how much dividend are we going to pay to the shareholder, okay, now, all these is referred to as the dividend policy, okay? The decisions as to, her, as to how much you're going to pay the dividend, when you're going to pay the dividend, okay? Uh, what form it will take, okay? Do we pay cash, do we pay bonus, do we pay uh, uh, through, uh, what format do we pay uh, out of cash uh, asset distribution? So all these uh, need to be, uh, uh, you are the one as a manager who is going to be responsible for coming up with those policies, okay? And I've said all this combined is what referred to as the dividend policy. Okay, all this combined is what referred to as dividend policy. Okay. <clears throat> we shall discuss, okay, we shall also discuss in the topic, okay, uh, why pay the dividend, okay, or rather, what is going to be to determine the policy you're going to be adopting, okay? One of the key unique uh, elements of the dividend policy, of course, is how much, okay, that's going to be the unique thing. Don't forget, uh, we say that one of the key uh, shareholders' objective is wealth maximization. Okay, and if you remember, we say that one of the elements of assessing the return to the shareholder is a dividend component. Okay, is a dividend component. Okay, you so hope you remember P1 P1 minus P0 plus D divided by P0. Okay, hope you remember that formula. Okay, uh, P1 being the share price at the period, uh, P0 being the share price begin the period. Okay, and of course D being the dividend. Uh, that the company shall be paying within the period, okay? So the share return is made of the capital gain component and the dividend yield component, okay? So of course, shareholder, the main concern is that I want to maximize my wealth. I want to ensure that I can get as much as uh, maximum possible, okay, uh, 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 return, okay? So the D, the dividend, the D, okay, has an impact on my wealth, has an impact on my return. So I would want to pay as much as possible, definitely, okay, in case I am a shareholder, okay? However, don't forget, as a manager, you may, as the, you as the management, okay, you may want to, uh, 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 you can't pay all the earnings of the company for years, for example, okay? So you need to come with a policy that again be governing how much, okay? The key element of the policy is how much, okay? So come up with policies, okay, that are going to be governing of the how much that is getting paid in form of the dividend, okay? <clears throat> So we shall discuss the reason behind or trying to determine uh, what are the factors that can influence uh, the policy that the company shall be adopting, okay? So we shall discuss them, okay? What are the factors uh, that do influence uh, how much we shall pay as dividend, okay? <clears throat> then also we shall discuss on the call the dividend theory, okay? We shall discuss on all factors the dividend theory, okay? Now here is to this theory, okay, uh, more has come, okay, we shall be discussing either to support or not support the company paying the dividend, okay? And is there any justification for company paying the dividend, okay? So we discuss the theory that may support company paying the dividend, okay? All other theories may say that it is not worthwhile, okay? So we shall discuss, now what are these theories that say that it is not worthwhile, okay, to pay the dividend, okay? So all these uh, we shall discuss in this particular topic, okay? I'll create a simple topic, okay, quite a straightforward topic, okay? And a short topic, okay. However, it can be asked, okay, to have been asked uh, in the past, okay. Anyway, let's begin. <clears throat> okay.
you mentioned the foreign company that is going to be in trading. Okay, of course, we need to uh, get to know, don't forget, for the company. If you assume, okay, that the company uh, is operating, okay, input in the normal way, okay, uh, don't forget you're going to pay the dividend, okay, uh, from the earnings of the company, okay, you shall be paying the dividend from the company earnings, okay. You don't pay the dividend by you don't pay the dividend, okay, by borrowing money. That is not going to happen, okay. So assuming the company is paying uh, the uh, in court the conventional dividend, okay, then of course the company has to consider how much of the retained earnings, okay, do you pay in form of dividend, okay. Don't forget, okay, at the same time, okay, as you make the decision of the amount of dividends we shall be paying from the company retained earning, okay. Uh, the company may want to retain some money. Okay, why to be able to sell finance its project? Okay, to be able to, to, to be able to sell finance your projects. Okay, uh, we shall discuss one of the theory. Okay, uh, one of the dividend theory. Okay, uh, we shall refer to as the residual theory. Okay, that say that at the end of the day, okay, as shareholders of the company, okay, uh, you have to consider that. Are you getting paid a lot of dividends today from the company earnings? Imply that in future uh, the amount of reserves you have is minimal. That therefore you may not be able to pay. Uh, you may not be able to invest in any or, or in many of the future potential projects. Okay, so there's that uh, sort of balance. Okay, so if you pay a lot of dividends today that imply that for in future, then of course that means for you have lower retained earnings. Okay, that means for uh, the head, the lower the chance of you making those investments. Okay, because you'll be having lower capital in future upon which you can use to finance those projects. Okay, so it's a trade-off. Okay, if we pay little, then of course the shareholders might be uh, might might might, okay, might in court riot. Okay. So as management, you are the one to try to uh, balance this too, okay? Retaining and pay the dividend. How much do you pay the dividend? And of course, how much do we retain there for, okay? So you have to consider all these factors. Uh, you have to put them into consideration. Uh, you as the one in charge of okay, the company, uh, uh, designing the company dividend policy, okay? <clears throat> A company should restrict its financing through returning, okay, in order to pay a reasonable dividend, okay? Uh, should not restrict, okay? Okay, this should be, should not, okay? Okay, the here is the company should not restrict, okay? So let me just put that. Mm. Okay, so the company should not restrict. Company should not. Okay, so the company definitely should not receive all its financing uh, through the dividend. Why? Because shareholders, they, they, they want to pay the dividend, okay? They want to pay the dividend, okay? So you cannot uh, uh, be taking all the earnings of the company and use them to finance your investment, no, okay? So you have to check a balance, okay? Uh, but as we shall, we shall mention, some shareholders, okay, don't want the dividend, okay? So you get to know who, uh, get to know who are my shareholders, okay? Do they want the dividend or do they not want the dividend? Okay, so get to understand very well, okay? You as the one, you as the management or the managers in charge of coming up with policy uh, regarding the payment of the dividend. This is usually determine the dividend policy, okay, in the company, okay, and shareholder, okay. So the policy that, and by policy, don't forget, I simply mean uh, how much pay the dividend, when pay the dividend, what form it will be taken, okay. Uh, when do you pay the dividend? Do you pay a final or an interim? So all those, you are the one, you as a manager, you are the one who do come up with those decisions, okay. In short, the company dividend policy is giving me, uh, you as a manager, you are the one who do come, come up with it, okay. She asked you as shareholder, what is your say, okay, with regard to uh, the payment of the dividend, okay? Your main say, okay, or may your main power, okay, uh, is to ask the company to reduce the dividend they are proposing, okay? That's one of the power you have as shareholder uh, in relation to uh, the payment of the dividend. You don't have the power, okay, to sort of force the company, okay, uh, to pay you the dividend, okay? So that you don't have that power, okay? Uh, the company, or you cannot force the company to pay your dividend, okay? However, if you think that maybe the dividend payment by the company is too high, okay, assume that, assume that that can happen, or the shareholder has that feeling, okay, then you can ask the management to reduce the dividend, okay? So in case they say that they pay you $10 per share as dividend, you can ask the management at the AGM, okay, reduce this dividend, okay? It is too much for us, okay? 
you know, if that can happen, then generally uh, you as the uh, shareholder, you have that power. However, you cannot ask the company to increase. Okay, the company uh, management, okay, D say you're going to pay two dollars. Okay, you can't go to the AGM and try to uh, sort of tell the manager, no, you're not going to take this. Okay, you're going to take two point five dollars. Okay, as dividend, you don't have that power. Okay, even though, even though in reality, okay, even though in some cases the shareholders might uh, arm twist the management. Okay, so sometimes they consider. Uh, uh, it has happened in the past, okay? We have shared said that we are not going to continue with this AGM unless you get pay us X amount as the dividend, okay? We have made profit. Our business has made profit for the last two years. You have not paid us dividend. We cannot continue with AGM uh, unless you do pay us X amount of dividend, okay? So sometimes you can have shareholder, okay? Having a sort of a, a backdoor power, okay? Of increasing the management, okay? It has happened. Uh, if I remember, one of the cases was uh, Safari Com shareholder, okay, and the first AGM, okay, uh, this happened, okay. So, either way, okay, so the shareholder, don't forget, okay, you don't have the power, okay, in, uh, in theory, you don't have the power uh, of determining how much dividend you will be paid, okay, that is going to be, or that is a management decision, okay, that is a management decision. Okay. The next key thing, I think I did mention, okay, is now what are the factors that do influence the amount of dividend, okay, that we are, okay, the amount of dividend that uh, we shall be paid, okay? Okay, as I mentioned, one of the key elements of the policy, the company dividend policy statement, okay, uh, is how much. And of course, the other key concern is how much. Don't forget, for the shareholders, I mentioned uh, one of their key drivers is maximization of shareholders' wealth. Okay, and I said one of the elements of shareholders' wealth maximization uh, by company paying the dividend. So the key concern in the policy is how much. Okay, so therefore, the key concentration also in the factor of the policy is on how much dividend. So what factors influence how much dividend uh, should the company uh, will the company pay the dividend the shareholder? Okay. Of course, one of the key factor is the company profit. Okay, this gain is self-explanatory. Okay, don't forget, as a company, you cannot pay dividend. Okay, or you should not pay dividend. Okay, by borrowing money. Okay, taking a loan to pay the dividend. Okay, that that doesn't make any sense. Okay, you borrow money, then the so that can pay the share dividend. Okay, it doesn't does not make any sense. Okay. So you have to consider, okay, how much profit, how much reserves, okay, do we have, okay? If you are a profitable company, then of course the higher the retain earning you'll be having, okay? And of course the higher the dividend, you can be able to afford to pay the shareholder to the shareholder in more dividend, okay? If you are a loss making venture, okay, if you are a loss making venture, then how can you pay the dividend? Don't forget you must make profit, you must have retained earning. If you pay, if for example, okay. You do have negative return on it, okay, as for the company uh, uh, balance sheet, okay, you have a negative return on it, okay. Okay, I think in the case of KQ, I think they do have that case, okay, where they have negative return on it, okay. In short, the company is making losses for the last uh, known years, okay, to an extent they have zero return on it. In that case, therefore, as a company, you cannot pay the dividend until you are able to correct uh, that position, okay. So the company, your profit making ventures are the one that can determine how much of the dividend you will be paying, okay? How much of the dividend that you will be paying. Another factor to consider, the factor to consider, of course, is the company liquidity, okay? The liquidity, you have to consider uh, liquidity. Okay, consider therefore your liquidity. Okay, what do you mean by that? Okay, conventionally, okay, one of the method, one of or the the most commonly used, okay, uh, method of paying the dividend, okay, is through cash payment. Okay, cash dividend. Okay, uh, we say that you can also pay for bonus shares. Okay, the so-called the script dividend. Uh, it is also possible, okay, or even what we call a share repurchase. Okay? So it is possible to pay a dividend using uh, a diverse array of methods. Okay? However, okay, uh, what 
the common way of paying the dividend, okay, it will be the cash mode, okay, the, the cash rate of dividend, okay, that's again the common way of paying the dividend. Therefore, as shareholders of the company, okay, you, rather you as a management, okay, you have to consider, okay, if you're going to pay the dividend, okay, in form of cash, do we have cash in our account, okay, in quote, okay, do we have cash in our bank account to be able to afford to pay this dividend? As I mentioned, you cannot borrow money to pay the dividend, okay, so you must be able to see. If I want to pay $10 million worth of dividend, do I have that $10 million in my account today? Because in case you don't have that 10 million, then how can you pay the dividend? Okay, how can you be able to pay the dividend? Okay, so you must consider how much of uh, cash do you have? Okay, can I be able to afford to pay this dividend in form of cash? Okay. And the factor is the available investment opportunity. Okay, and the factor that influences the policy. Okay, is do you have available opportunities to invest your money? Okay. As I mentioned, that you have to consider, okay, uh, your future projects, okay, that you, as you make the decision today, okay, you have to consider uh, what are the future potential projects you can invest in, okay. If, for example, in three months time, you're going to purchase a machine, okay, a machine costing uh, 15 million, okay, then, and you don't, or maybe you don't have, access to external finances, okay? You don't have access to external finances. Okay, that is, you don't have, uh, the bank will not provide you with the capital. Uh, the capital markets will not be able to give you uh, access to issue shares, uh, issue bonds. If that's the case that your access to the capital market is limited, okay? Then don't forget your major financing alternative is the internal finances. And by general finance, we mean your retain earnings, okay? Your retain earnings. So in case you don't have access to capital market, what do you do? You have to ensure you do take, you do uh, uh, reserve as much as possible from the profit making, okay? By default, okay, the more the potential in investment you have, uh, the more you do want to retain, the more you do want to have the reserves to be like, okay? But if rather for lower dividends, okay? If there are years, okay, where maybe you don't have any potential investment, okay? Okay, so as we, uh, uh, we shall discuss this all in, in the theory of the, the CEO theory. Okay, in those years when you don't have uh, maybe any potential investment you can foresee, maybe in the next one year, okay, uh, that the company will continue in its current with, with its current investment, okay, then you may decide to pay the dividend. Okay, so pay the dividend because currently, okay, we have we have made profit and you cannot foresee any potential investment to make. Okay, what do you do? You can just decide. Okay, why do we, don't we pay the shareholder? The dividend. Okay, so why don't we pay the shareholder uh, the dividend? Okay, so that's a factor you may want to consider. What is my available investment opportunities? Okay, what's my available investment opportunities? The more they are, okay, by default, the lower becomes the amount of dividend you can pay the shareholders. Okay, if you don't have any investment you are making, what does that mean? Retain the money. Okay, if you don't have any investment, pay the shareholder the dividend. Okay, if you have huge potential investment retain the money so that you can have an internal finance source, okay? Oh, all, all is clear. Mm. Another factor that may influence the payment of the dividend, okay, is a company uh, covenants. What agreement does the company has with existing providers of capital, okay? One of key provider of capital is debt holders. What agreement do you have, okay? If you remember when we were discussing on the ages theory, okay, the first topic actually, the first topic we were discussing, we did discuss on the ages theory, okay, and one of the ages relationship we were discussing was shareholders versus debt holders, okay, shareholders versus debt holder, okay, so one of the way that the debt holders, okay, can attempt to protect their interests, okay, what is the debt holders' interest in the company? Is them to pay the money, to pay the interest, okay, and to pay the principal. Okay, that is a major concern for the holders. Okay, so you can have a scenario where the debt holder, okay, can tell the company, "We are going to give you uh, this one million dollar reward." However, one of the conditions you're going to put across, okay, is that you cannot pay yourself dividend for the next three years. Okay, but don't forget, in case you pay yourself huge dividends, that imply therefore the company retain earnings is decreasing, and of course, the company potential of paying interest in the future. Is decreasing okay 
So one of the ways that the, the holders can attempt to protect the, their interest in the company okay, is by requesting the company not to pay any dividend. Okay? Not even question, demanding more or okay? The company not paying any dividend. So in case the company has those agreement or uh, those uh, existing agreement, okay, if the company has those existing agreements, okay, uh, then uh, you have to consider them before you pay the dividend, okay. Are we going to contravene the already existing agreements, okay? If you're going to contravene those agreements, then you may want not to pay the dividend, okay. I'm assuming that one of the condition of the agreement is that the company cannot pay shareholder dividend uh, for the next X years, okay or above uh, 2 million, for example, okay? So you have to consider, okay, what are my current existing agreement, okay? What do they say in relation to the dividend payment, okay? So you have to stick within the provisions of those agreements, okay? The other factor is on the industry practice or the norm of the industry, okay? Most of the time, okay, firms will follow similar trends, okay? Uh, if the company, if uh, given industry do finance their project using loans, and most of the time, uh, other firms shall be doing the same, okay? Same applies to the case of the dividend. If other firms that you have similar operation with, okay, I've seen that you're in the case of telecom industry, okay? If they do pay the dividend, okay, and you are a new entrant in that particular industry, then most of the time, you're going to be adopting uh, what you do find in that industry okay if the industry pay the dividend then you may more or less want to adopt the same policy okay uh, if they don't pay the dividend then you may more or less going to stick with what other firms in the industry uh, shall be doing okay so industry norm the practice what does the other firm normally do okay so most of the time okay most of the time firms adopt what other industry what other firms in the same industry do normally carry out if, don't pay, if they don't pay the dividend, then essentially the same might be applied to you. There is no prevent of the dividend, therefore. Okay. Another factor that may, of course, influence the payment of the dividend, okay, uh, is on the company growth stage. Okay? Is on the company growth stage. What do you mean by that? Okay. Let me just draw a company life cycle graph here, okay, to help us understand. Okay, the carbon life cycle, okay, company life cycle. Generally, okay, for most company, okay, they do go through phases, okay. So assume that this is, okay, if this can be term of profit, okay. The Y axis can be profit, can be revenue, can be assets, okay. Just to measure growth of the company, whatever uh, means you want to use, okay, can be asset of the company versus time, okay, versus, okay, time, okay. So generally, the company, this is going to be the conventional way of our company, okay. So, okay, this, this part here, Just draw the graph again. So here, so here, the company has just been formed. Okay, uh, the startup growth. Okay, there is a growth phase. Okay, this is maturity. Then you can either go this way, and you can either go this way. Okay. So here, this is called the startup stage. Okay, this is startup. This is the growth phase, for example. This is maturity. And this is either you reinvent yourself, okay, from reinvention. If you don't reinvent yourself, then what happened? Simply decline. Okay. So it depends on what, what stage of growth are you? Are you a startup company? Are you the growth phase? Are you in, are you a mature firm in the industry? Are you declining? Okay. What is happening? Okay. What phase are you in? Okay. If the company is in the growth and the startup phase, okay, then generally you do not make out of profit. Actually, in the startup phase, you may be making losses, okay. As the company is uh, is starting up, okay, quite unlikely you're going to make profit in the first month, okay, or the first even year, okay. So generally, at the startup phase, okay, you might be making losses. 
Now, if you're making losses, how can you pay the dividend? Okay, that can happen, okay? If you're in the growth phase, okay, maybe you, may, you have now started making profit, okay? But don't forget, as a company, you are in the expansionary phase, okay? You are expanding as a firm. Now, what does that mean? If you're expanding, it means the need for capital is quite high, okay? The need for money is quite high. And if the need for money is quite high, then why do you pay the dividend, then you go and borrow money from the market? It makes no sense, okay? So therefore, most of the time, conventionally, okay, uh, the firms in the growth phase shall be retaining as much profit as possible, paying very little dividend, if anything, okay? Now, if the farm is mature, okay, the farm has been in existence for the last 30 years, 40 years, okay, it means generally, okay, they have very limited investment they're making. Don't forget the more old you, okay, the more older the farm is, they have the chance that they're going to make very minimal investments. They have been able to make the investment uh, for the last 30 years, okay, so therefore, in that case, therefore, uh, the available investment are also restricted. At the same time, you are mature farm, okay. It means you have been able to accumulate a lot of retain earnings in the past, okay? That imply, therefore, in that case, therefore, you can be able to pay a lot of dividend, okay? Since you are a mature farm, okay? So you've been there for many years. It means you've been able to uh, accumulate dividend, uh, retain earnings. So the chance of you paying dividend is much higher, okay, in the mature phase than in the growth phase and in the startup phase, okay? If you're declining, that is, you're going out of business, so what does that mean? It means you're closing down. It means you're going to be returning back the capital to the shareholder. It means you are more or, more or less paying what they call liquidating dividend, okay? The final dividend, okay? You're paying what that was uh, the liquidating dividend. You're closing down. So what are you paying? You're doing. You're selling off your assets in order to get money to pay the shareholder or dividend, okay? Of course, after you do, uh, uh, you pay the taxes, you pay the employees, uh, you pay uh, the uh, creditors, okay? So what remains is what you're paying to, you're paying to the shareholder in form of dividend, okay? If the company reinvent itself by offering, for example, maybe other products, okay, trying to, uh, to uh, advertise more on it, already existing brands, for example, okay? So they may be able to continue, to continue in operation, okay? And that means, therefore, um, higher potential profits the company can make, and of course, higher the chance of the company paying the dividend, okay? So in what phase are you in, okay? In what uh, 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 growth phase are you in, okay? Are you starting up? Are you in the growth phase? Are you mature farm? Are you declining? What phase are you in, okay? Because that should have, may have uh, uh, an impact. On the policy you're going to be adopting when it comes to determining how much of dividend should you pay to the shareholders. Okay, so that was on that point. And the factor in the company capital structure. In the next topic that we shall discuss, we shall be discussing all the factors, the capital structure theory. What is capital structure? Now, capital structure, okay, is simply how do you finance your assets? As a farm, how do you finance your assets? If you assume that this farm is financed purely by debt and equity, okay, if you assume that this farm uh, is financed purely by debt and equity, okay, how much of debt do you have? Out of the 10 million assets you have, okay, out of the 10 million assets that you have, how much of that 10 million came from shareholder? How much of that 10 million came from debt holder? That's simply what you've had as capital structure. Okay? How do you finance your long term assets as a, as a business, as a firm? Okay. Generally, in capital structure theory, we assume that an optimal capital structure exists. Okay, what do you mean by uh, optimality? Okay. It means, therefore, that the farm is at its best condition. Okay, so therefore, at that point in time, the company has the lowest possible cost of capital. Okay, I think you just uh, done that topic. Okay, that can the company be able to achieve a very low cost of capital? Okay, by trying to balance debt and equity. Okay, if that's possible, then that mix of debt and equity, where we achieve the minimum possible cost of capital, okay, then we refer to it as the optimal capital structure. Let me just use an example. Okay. So, if for example, okay, the company has an optimal capital structure, an optimal mix of debt and equity, 
okay, an optimal capital structure, okay, where maybe this is the optimal, let me call this is the optimal, mm -hmm. debt equity, debt is let's say 30%, equity the balance 20%, this is the optimal, okay, but if I assume that the company is yet to achieve that optimality, okay, that makes it an equity, assume that the, the current status is that the amount of debt the company has uh, is let's say let's say fifty percent, and of course equity fifty percent. Okay, this is the current uh, company financial gearing. Okay, there is the company current financial gearing fifty fifty. Okay, however, the optimal is thirty seventy. Now, as you can see in this case, the company need to increase its equity from 50 percent all the way to 70 percent how can that happen one of the way that the company can be able to achieve that increase in its equity position is by retaining the earnings it is making don't forget the equity component is made of of course the issued uh, the issued capital plus reserves okay so you can be able to boost your equity by retaining uh, the company's profit Okay, so in this case, therefore, the company okay, may want to retain the earnings it is making. The company may want to retain the earnings making so they can be able to increase its equity position. Okay. If the company, however, the company, uh, this situation one, or scenario one, in scenario two, the company gearing, okay, is let's say 2080. Okay, 20. 80 yes okay 20 percent 80 percent okay that's the company uh current gearing they want to achieve 30 70 okay the optimal capital structure now don't forget here in this case the company is equity is 80 percent the optimal is 70 percent now what does that mean we mean to decrease the equity from that seven from 80 to 70 okay from 80 uh, to 70. Okay, that means, therefore, as a company, what do you do? You can pay, you can decrease your equity by paying the dividend. Okay, by paying, by going to it, by going to you retain money and paying some of those results to the shareholder in the form of the dividend. Okay, so consider what is my capital structure and what is the optimal capital structure. Okay, should I retain more of my earnings? Should I pay in the earnings to decrease my equity position? Okay, that's on the company capital structure. Okay. The factor that may influence the dividend policy, okay, the company shall be adopting is the law. What does the law say? Okay, what is uh, the provision, okay, uh, under the company's act, for example, okay, uh, with regard to the payment of the dividend, okay? One of the provisions or one of the law is what called the undue retention of earnings, okay? Maybe in this case, it does not, it does not apply to the case of Kenya, okay? Or call the undue retention of earnings of company. Okay. Now, what does that mean? I mean, therefore, okay. Sometimes the law can, in quote, force you to pay the dividend. Okay. The law can, in quote, force you to pay uh, the dividend. Okay. Now, why would the law force you to pay the dividend? Is so that you can pay taxes. Okay. In most cases, uh, most of the dividends. Okay. You do get. You receive a shareholder. Are taxable, okay? They are part and parcel of your taxable incomes, okay? They're part and parcel of your taxable income. Now, what does that mean, okay? If they're part of your taxable income, that means, therefore, the KRA, okay, let's assume the case of Kenya, okay, is going to earn money out of you. If you have companies that are not paying dividend, I mean, therefore, you are denying the government the chance of making the money on, uh, making tax on their dividend, okay? That's what it means, because you're not paying the dividend. Now, the government may pre-assume, okay, even in those years where you didn't pay dividend, you ought to have paid yourself dividend, okay? If, for example, yes, sure. Here, my right up here. If, for example, okay, that's, let's say the industry, okay, they're the farms that you operate with, okay, similar operation, okay, they did pay, let's say, 25% of their earnings in the form of dividend. So then the farms pay dividend, okay? This is the industry. Now you as company A, okay, you paid zero, you didn't pay anything, okay? Now the taxman okay, can assume, okay, since the other farms in this industry, they pay themselves dividends, 25% of the earnings, and yourself, you didn't pay the dividend, it means that you are attempting to evade tax, okay? So they can assume, okay, 
that you ought to have paid yourself 25% of your earnings as dividend. So in case, for example, that year this company made 10 million, okay, then therefore they assumed dividend, let me say, they assumed dividend, okay, would have been equal to 25% of your earnings, okay, the 10 million. That means therefore you could have paid yourself, the shareholder, okay, uh, 2.5 million dollar. Now here, the carry or the taxman, okay, is going to assume therefore this 2.5 million. Don't forget the 2.5 million, you didn't pay anything, okay. However, is an assumed dividend. They are all the tax. Now, see if the tax rate is, let's say, 10%, then the tax money is going to demand from the company, okay, 10% of the assumed dividend, okay, in this case, 25 million to give it therefore to 50,000 share uh, dollars. Then for the company, whether you pay the dividend or you don't pay the dividend, the tax money is going to be for sort of demanding to 50,000, okay, out of, the, out of the tax on the assumed dividend, okay. That way, therefore, as the company, you're paying for something, you're, you're paying a tax, okay, uh, for not paying the dividend, okay. So, in short, it's like the law is forcing you, okay, as a company to pay the dividend, okay. You're being forced in court, okay, to pay the dividend, okay. Then you have called the capital payment rule, okay, which I think I already mentioned is that as a company, okay, you're only going to pay the dividend from the earnings you're making. You're only going to pay uh, the dividend from the earnings that you're making. What you mean, therefore, if as a company, you're not making any earnings, there's no profit you're making. Don't forget, as I mentioned, you cannot borrow money to pay the dividend, okay? You cannot borrow money so that you can pay the shareholder the dividend, okay? That can't happen, okay? So what does that mean? It means, therefore, you can only pay the dividend from the profits the company is making. If no profit, no dividends. Okay, you cannot. In short, of you cannot. If you have a case where you do have company paying dividends, okay, even though there is no returning, it means therefore the company is is simply returning back the capital. Okay, if you have if, if you don't have any returning, okay, and you pay the dividends, what is happening? How do you, where do you get the money from? Okay, it means you are selling off your assets and use that money to pay the shareholders off, okay? It means the company is simply closing down, okay? Because capital impairment, it means once you turn the money, it means you're, you're impairing your capital, okay? But in case you're still in operation, in case you're still in operation, then you cannot pay the dividend if there's no earnings, okay? You can't borrow money to pay the dividend, okay? And then you have called this insolvency rule, okay? The insolvency uh, rule. Now, what does this mean, okay, insolvency? Now, this means that the farm, okay, this means, therefore, that the farm, if it has a negative equity position, if a farm has a negative equity position, that means, therefore, the assets, okay, is lower than their total liability, okay? The assets are lower in terms of amount uh, compared to the company total liability. Okay, the company has a total asset base of 8 million. The farm has a total obligation of 10 million. As we see, the obligations, 10 million, is more than the asset, 8 million. It means you have a negative equity position. If that's the case, you can't pay yourself dividends until you're able to collect that position, until, in short, the shareholder's fund okay, is positive value. If it is negative value, then you cannot pay yourself any dividend. Okay, you can't pay yourself any dividend. Okay, that simply that we therefore okay would call the insolvency rule. Okay. <clears throat> now saying uh, we would want to share okay the accounts for KQ. Okay, just show you what we mean by that because I think last time I checked for KQ, okay, uh, they had that. Okay, that was their position. Okay, so these are the accounts of KQ, okay, as uh, it's the year added 2017. Okay, I've just taken from the internet, okay. Now, we see that one of the factors that is going to be influencing, now let me just confirm whether you can see my slides well. <coughs> Mahir. Yes, sir. Can you see my, can you see my, 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 my the, the, the accounts? Yeah, yeah, they are seen clearly. 
that will be clear. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, so. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now these are the accounts for KQ for the year twenty uh, yeah, seventeen. When you say that if the company you are making losses, okay, let me go to the P and L. Okay. If you're making losses, don't forget you can't pay yourself out of you can't pay yourself dividend. You can't pay any dividend as per se. Okay. Now the loss for the year in the year twenty seventeen. Okay. The loss after tax. You can see. Mm -hmm. Sorry that I can't be able to uh, label one my work here. Okay, you can see the company okay, made uh, a loss of 84 million. Okay, it made no, oh, okay, it made a loss of uh, 10 billion. Okay, so they made a loss of 10 billion because in the year 2017, in the year 2016, the company made a loss of 26 billion. Okay, now don't forget in that case, therefore, as a company, from where do you get the money to pay the dividend? You can't pay the dividend. Okay, now let's check whether, don't forget, if for example, in this year you made a loss. Okay, it does not mean you can't pay dividend, provided you have some profit you made from the previous years. Okay, even if in the previous year, okay, you did make some profit, don't forget you can pay dividend this year from those earnings that you made in the previous year, even though this year is a loss. But let's see whether they do have that. Okay, the company has a positive value for its reserves for its return. Okay, so if we check the company uh, total assets of the company. The company total assets, okay. You can see here, okay, it's 146 billion. Okay, you can see the company has a total asset of 146 billion. Okay, it has a total asset of 146 billion. So compare that with the company total liability. Okay, so this company has a total asset base of 146 billion. Now let's see its total liability. Okay, the non, the non current liability is 119. The non current is 119. The current okay, is 71. But give you a figure total liability of 191 billion. Okay, of 191 billion. Okay, now what does that mean? It means therefore that the liability 191 billion are more than the company total assets of 146 billion. Okay, that's what I mean by the company is deemed to be technically insolvent. Okay, technical insolvency. Okay, that this firm has more liability than assets. In that case, therefore, you cannot pay any dividend. Okay, in that case, therefore, you cannot pay any dividend. Now, let's check. Okay, we see that even though the company are making losses, okay, you can pay yourself dividend from the previous year earnings. But this company, okay, you check, if you check on the company it's earning, okay, see where it is, okay, on the equity component, okay, the company it's earning is negative fifty-one billion. So the company already they have from the previous years, okay, uh, they have already made a loss of fifty-one billion. So you can't pay a dividend, okay? From where you get the money from, okay? If, for example, assume the actual of this company, and we see an element of dividend, okay. If you go to the current liabilities, okay, and for this for sure, it should not be appearing. But I see that maybe we did say it as part of the company current liability, okay. At one of the item here, okay, on the current liability is dividend. Now, what would that mean? It means the company is closing down. Let me see. Let me the company because what from where do you get the money to pay the dividend unless you are selling off your assets? Okay, that's what is what is only uh, a possible explanation. So don't forget if the company is insolvent, okay? If the company is insolvent, therefore you cannot pay yourself dividend. Okay, you can't pay yourself dividend. Okay. What do you mean by technical insolvency? Okay, now this is just a simple example of the Kenya Airways. Okay. So that's on the insolvent the legal restrictions on the case of the insolvency uh, rule. And the factor, of course, that might influence uh, the payment of dividends, okay, is who are the owners, okay? Who I would call the ownership structure, okay? Who are the owners of the company, okay? In a small firm where the owners are few and want to re uh, retain funds, okay, for expansion, uh, they are going to really pay dividends, okay? If the company is owned by, uh, is a family business, okay? Quite unlikely they're going to, they're going to find an element of dividends, okay? This family business, okay. So generally, most of the time they're going to attempt to reinvest their money into the business, okay. So quite unlikely you're going to find the company paying or that farm paying the dividends, okay. 
But if the farm is going to be owned is a PLC, is a public listed company with uh, diverse needs of its shareholders, okay? They are very diverse shareholders with the diverse need the company. So you may have company paying dividends in for those company. So for those shareholders, okay? So who are the owners, okay? Are they, is it a family business, okay? Is it a PLC, okay? The factor could be what we call the shareholder's expectation, okay? The shareholder's expectation, okay? What do the shareholder anticipate, okay? As I mentioned, one of the case uh, in the year 2008, okay? On the share, uh, share, shareholders of Safaricom, okay? So they demanded pay no dividend, okay? Why? Because them, they were individuals more, okay, in terms of the numbers, okay? Not in terms of, not, not in terms of shareholding, but in terms of the number, okay, uh, they were more of individuals, okay, than corporations who are shareholders, okay, in terms of the number, okay. Uh, that means, therefore, don't forget, for individuals, what do they consider? For individuals, they consider dividend as a supplementary income, okay. So that means, therefore, if a company don't declare dividend, what does that mean? It means that their income source is going to be hit, okay. And that means, therefore, the shareholders may, in quote, force the management to pay the dividend. Okay, now that means therefore, if that's the case, therefore, you know who are our shareholder. Uh, you as manager, you know, okay, our shareholders are, are individuals. Now that means therefore, you may you may want to come up with a policy that do uh, suits to their need. Okay, they want the dividend, so you may they may in quote uh, force you to pay them a dividend. Okay, so what is the exclusive shareholder? Okay, do they want the dividend or do they not want the dividend? Okay, if the reverse occur, okay, where you have more of uh, corporations, okay, other business, other other company, uh, being the majority shareholders of the company, okay, so the company or oh, invest in that company, in short, okay. So in case you do have that case, okay, then for most corporations, okay, for most maybe even pension funds, okay, uh, they don't want the dividend, okay. You rather reinvest the money, okay. So in case those are your shareholders, okay, they are more of corporations, they are more of companies, okay then you may not want to pay the dividend, okay? So try to understand, okay? What do my shareholder anticipate, okay? Do they want the dividend or do they not want the dividend? Okay? So you may have to try to uh, have your policy in line with what was the shareholder's expectations. Okay. Another factor which I think I already mentioned is access to capital markets, okay? How easy is it for you as a company to be able to access the capital market, to be able to, be, to get finance for the bank, to be able to get to issue shares, to be able to issue bonds, okay? If it is easy to obtain money from other people, then retained earning does not become, doesn't become your only finance source, okay? That means therefore you can't pay the dividend, okay? Because you're sure that someone else is going to finance you, more or less, okay? But in case the access to the capital market is quite restricted, okay, that means therefore uh, no one is going to give you money from the from the external market, from the bank. You can't issue shares. You can't issue bonds in the market. What do you do? Retain as much as possible because no one is the market is going to come and so and in could save you, okay, uh, from your capital, uh, uh, from your project capital needs, okay. So get no, okay. Can I be able to access the market? If you can't access the market, then you may want to uh, pay the, not pay the dividend. If you can, you're sure, in, in quote, uh, that you can get the money from the market, then you can pay yourself dividend, okay? Okay, and those are the factors that do influence uh, the policy that the company can adopt, okay? Now, this was a question your examiner asked some time ago. Let me get the question back. Okay. Yeah, actually, the simple is that you've been asked what are the factors that do influence the policy the company should be adopting? Okay. Or what are the factors that influence the amount of dividends that you can go to pay as a company? Uh, I think it was a 10 months question. And now, cut me, but let's just, let's just look. Okay. From the question back. Okay. So, in case you get it, you let me know. So, I'm going through your question back. Okay, I've seen one of the question <clears throat> on page, I don't know the same page, page 25, okay, 25, uh, that is 24, 25, on a company called NN Company. Let me share my question bank, okay. On a company called NN Company. There's a company here called NN Company. <clears throat> 
page 24, page 25. And one of the question, okay, is part D of the question is asking us, discuss a factor to be considered in formulating the dividend policy of a stock exchange listed company, 10 marks. What factors do, okay, uh, is company management uh, going to consider when formulating the policy, okay? Of course, when determining how much to pay. As you can see, these are 10 marks, okay? We are 10 marks question, okay? Uh, and you can see, this is a discussion, since it is a discussion question, I would expect that you write at least five points, okay? And of course, those five points, you discuss in detail, okay? So it's a discussion uh, in detail, okay, for the 10 marks. For any, any of those five points, okay? I think there are more or less three marks here. Okay, so discuss any of those five points. Okay, for a 10 marks question. Okay, quite a lot of marks. Okay, and those are some of the factors that do uh, determine okay, the policy the company shall be adopting. Okay, as I mentioned, one of the key elements of the policy is how much okay, is on the how much. Okay. Okay, then we discuss the theory, okay, the so-called uh, the dividend theories, okay, the dividend theory, okay. And the first theory is called uh, the information, okay, actually let me just write down, okay, so sometimes this can be called the so-called the information, the information signaling theory, the information signaling, signaling theory. Now, this theory, okay, it says that at the end of the day, when it comes to uh, designing the policy, okay, when it comes to uh, designing the policy, uh, as a company, you will have to consider, okay, uh, what sort of information uh, is the market going to, uh, how is the market going to interpret this particular decision you're making towards the dividend, okay? Is the market going to take it from a positive angle or is the market going to take it from a negative angle? Okay, how is the market going to interpret uh, this in new information? If, for example, last year we did pay uh, two shillings per share as the dividend, and now this year the company, the board of the company, okay, proposed to reduce from two uh, to 1.5. Okay, how is the market going to interpret that? Good or bad? No? Was going to be a bad information to the market, okay? Now, so the market going to interpret as if this is a bad information, okay? So, when it comes to the information signal theory, okay, when it comes to deciding, okay, what policy you're going to follow, what policy you're going to follow, okay, in relation to the payment of the dividend, you have to consider what sort of information the market is going to pick and how is the market going to interpret that information, okay? If the market is going to interpret that information as negative uh, signal, and of course, uh, the market, the share price, more or less, is going to decrease, okay? Don't forget any negative information the market receives shall have an impact on the share price, okay? So therefore, there will be a decrease in the company share price, okay? There will be a decrease in the company share price, okay? What information are you passing to the market? If it's a negative information, then of course, we have a negative impact on the company share price. In short, therefore, the company dividend policy have an impact on the company's share price, okay? Conventionally, okay, for farms, okay, so they want, or they would want as much as possible to avoid paying high dividend, okay? They would want to ensure that we can pay, okay, let's say more dividend, okay? We pay a dividend that we know, even if there'll be a bad year that we shall, ex if, if we experience, okay, a bad year, okay? If we shall experience one day, bad year, okay? then we can be able to sustain the payment, payment of the dividend. So they're going to ensure that the amount of dividend they shall be paying, okay, the amount of dividend they shall be paying, okay, uh, will be in line, okay, because of the countries, okay. We'll ensure that even in the future, okay, maybe if one year they make a loss, okay, even in that year when they make a loss, they can be, they can afford, okay, to pay the dividend, okay, they can be able to afford to pay the dividend, okay. So as you come up with the policy of how much you shall be paid, uh, they'll have to consider also in the future, can we be able to pay the dividend, okay? Because any reduction in the dividend 
any reduction in the company dividend, okay, is taken as bad information. Any increase, it does not matter how you're going to how you're going to uh, try to sugarcoat it. Okay, any decrease, okay, is bad information. Any increase will be taken as if it's a good information. Okay, so as you come policy, ensure that whatever amount we're deciding to pay, can we sustain this payment even in future? So the management can use the uh, dividend policy to signal important information to the market, which is only known to them. So the market is going to interpret it. If you pay more dividends, what does it mean? It means that we as management, we are sure that we can sustain this high dividend even in future, even in those years where they shall make in losses. Okay, that is how uh, the market is going to interpret that information. Okay. And of course, as I mentioned, if the market is going to perceive that to be a good information, then there will be an increase in the capital share price. Any perceived negative information, okay, is going to be uh, deemed as a negative signal, okay? That means therefore the market is going to react negatively. So there'll be a decrease in the company share price, okay? The investor looks at the real dividend policy to determine whether or not to invest in a company, okay? So it's not whether or not to invest in a company. Generally, okay, this is uh, what we can say, a rudimentary way of trying to uh, make your investment decision. However, it can also be a good one, okay? That's, if we have a farm here, okay, it has been operation for the last 10 years, okay? And they have never paid the dividend. You may want to ask yourself, why have they, uh, why have they never able to pay the dividend, okay? And they got listed 10 years ago. Could they mean that maybe they are making losses? Or could they mean that maybe their business doesn't generate money? In most cases, okay, as I mentioned, if there are firms that are paying dividends, okay, and they're paying well, uh, they're paying high dividends, maybe that's a good business because where do they get the money from to pay the dividend? It means their operation is making money, okay? So I mentioned this is a rudimentary way of trying to make a, a decision as to where to invest, or, but it works, okay? But sometimes it does work. However, sometimes this signaling effect, okay, might be misused, okay? Let's use the term, a term misused, okay? So, okay, so this time, sometimes this can, it can be misused, okay? If, for example, okay, we have company, uh, in the case of acquisition, okay, in the case of acquisition, okay, their farm, uh, farm A want to acquire farm B, okay? Farm A want to acquire farm B, of course, Conventionally, what is going to happen? Let me just uh, share my work papers here. <coughs> Where is this? Okay. For example, we have case of um, there's a case of acquisition. Okay, we have here from A. Okay, they want to acquire from B. Okay, so this here they want they give cash. Okay, or whatever format they want to pay. Okay then in turn they're going to have the share okay conventionally what happens is that the board member uh the board of company a, okay of course again to approach the board of company b and they tailor their okay the acquisition okay papers okay we don't acquire your company uh you want to acquire four percent of your company and this is the amount we will be willing to pay okay because is how gen is going to occur however you can have a call a hostile takeover okay you can have a call a hostile takeover okay and okay, what's called is an unfriendly acquisition, okay? Unfriendly in quote, okay? Acquisition. Now, what happened generally? What happened in this case, okay? Now, what happened is that company A, board member of company A, okay, shall approach the shareholder of company B. In short, therefore, the board of company B is ignored, okay? So, the board of company A is going to approach the shareholders of company A. And tell them, hey, look, your shares, your share price is how much, okay? Uh, your share price, let's say, uh, as a smart, okay, uh, was, let's say, $20. Now, your share price today, that is, let's say, on the 21st of May, okay, is, let's say, $15, okay? So, we are willing to pay you $20, okay? So, you want to acquire your company, and you're willing to pay you $15, okay? We're willing to pay you, for example, a higher figure, maybe 18 or 17, whatever it is, okay? Now, if the shareholder okay, of company B goes ahead and uh, 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 more or less sell off their shares to uh, company A, 
Now the next to happen is of course once company A, once company A, okay, once company A acquires B, then of course the first thing that the management okay of company B shall go home in short. Okay. The money will have to go home. Okay. Now to prevent that, okay, one of the ways that the management can attempt to try to prevent that acquisition from occurring is by once they get to know, okay, that uh, maybe the board of company A, okay, is approaching the shareholder. They may declare a very high dividend. Okay, they can declare, for example, we pay a dividend of let's say ten shillings, okay, or ten dollars. Okay. Now, what will that mean? Okay, once the company B declares high dividend, it means the share price will have to increase. Okay, for example, from uh, let's say from fifteen, okay, uh, to let's say thirty. It's just an example. I'm just trying to assume. Okay, to thirty. Now that means, therefore, if company A would want to acquire the same uh, stake in company B. They're going to pay more. Don't forget, in this case here, okay, they were paying, for example, 20. It means that for every share they're going to be acquiring, they pay an extra more than what they were anticipating of $10. Okay, because it's 30 uh, minus the 20 cases okay, so they are paying an extra $10. Therefore, it becomes more expensive for carbon A to acquire company B. Okay. That's it. it can be, don't forget, this is not good for shareholder. Okay. For the management, it sounds to be good. It, it looks to be good. Okay. Don't forget this ten dollar is an artificial dividend, not artificial. Okay? It's an actual dividend. Okay. However, this we know that the company cannot sustain this. Okay. The intention was simply to drive the share price up. Okay. So it is not. It might not be good for the shareholder in the long term. Okay. So that's it can be. All these uh, the this dividend signaling effects. Okay, can be misused by the management. Okay. Not that they care about the shareholder. They care more about, about their jobs. Okay. That's why they they want to give the high dividend. Okay, as you mentioned, okay, the uh, dividend policy can be used as a defense against any potential takeover. Okay, it can be used as a defense against a takeover. Okay, where well, the company pay pays a high dividend and they know, okay, this dividend we can't be able to pay it in the future. However, let's just pay it, okay, so that we just dissuade this potential acquirer, okay, by driving the share price. Uh, very high, okay, to make it very expensive uh, for the acquirer uh, to acquire uh, the sick they wanted to acquire in the company. Okay, that's what we call the information signaling theory. The information uh, signaling theory. Okay, <clears throat> if you have a question, I'll get you. Let me know. So that's the first theory. The second theory is called the residual theory, okay, which I think I've already mentioned, okay, uh, the so-called the residual theory. Now, in this theory, okay, as you mentioned, uh, the company management will have to consider, the company management uh, will have to consider, okay, uh, how much of dividend, okay, how much of, uh, well, what are the, uh, are the potential investable projects, okay? Uh, where can we invest our money? Okay, you can invest in I don't know, real estate, whatever it is. Okay, so first consider, okay, what are the potential investable and by the term investable, they are value adding projects. Okay, they are positive NPV projects. Okay, now what are uh, what are the available investable projects? Okay, assume, let me just give an example. And see that the company, okay, and this is in the year 2020. They, these are the potential projects, okay, okay, uh, A, B, and C, okay, the cost of each of the projects. And see that for A, it's let's say 3 million, for B, 3 million, and for C, let's say uh, 18 million. Okay, therefore, the total amount uh, of capital required is 28 million. Okay. Assume that they're all investable, okay, that is a positive NPV. This is positive. Positive and positive, they're all investable. Okay, that means therefore, for if the company will take all of them, they need to have a capital of 28 million. Now, as per the residual theory, before you go externally to get the money, look whether you do, you have, do I have internal capital sources? Okay, internal funds, okay, or capital. Do I have internal capital that is from 10 and If in the year 2020, the amount of profit we make, okay, let's say that 5 million. Okay, assume that the case, then the company, before you can pay a dividend, first take the 28 million. Okay, the cost here was 28 million. 
okay? First, take the 28 million out of that five, okay? Therefore, that five million minus 28 million, okay? To give, therefore, seven million. So first, take the 28 million and invest in the projects, okay? The remainder, in this case, the seven million, pay to the shareholder in form of the dividend. Now, what that means, therefore, is that the dividend is what remains, is the residue, okay? And that's what we call this, 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 that's why we define this as the residual theory, okay? So the dividend is only paid once the company uh, has been able to finance the project. Now assume that maybe in this case, because <clears throat> for scenario one, assume that maybe, let me go scenario two, okay? Assume that in scenario two, the profit of the company in the 2020, it's let's say 20 million. That's a profit of the company, okay? That's a profit for the company, okay? Is equal to 10 million. That implies, therefore, the company, before, as I mentioned, before you go externally, consider your internal finances, then take the entire 20 million, invest the project, okay? Therefore, all the 20 million is taken, is will be used by the investment. What is remaining? Zero, because there's nothing that is remaining. Therefore, in that year, therefore, the company shall pay zero dividend, okay? That's what it means. And they shall be paying zero dividend. If there's an year, okay, where the company does not have any project, okay, so this project don't exist, and they make the 20 million, the entire 20 million is paid in for the dividend. If there are years when the company does not make any investment, okay, whatever they make that particular year, they're going to be paying to the shareholder the entire of that money as dividend. So the CEO, what is remaining, okay, the CEO is what is remaining. Okay, then the question is, okay, does the deal therefore have an impact on the company's share price? Okay, does the company, uh, 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 the policy, does the deal have an impact on the share price, okay? It may have an impact on the company's share price, okay? Uh, if the company is going to invest the money in value-adding projects, what does that mean? Therefore, there will be an increase in the company's share price, okay? There will be an increase in the company share price because the company is investing in value-adding projects, okay? If you don't pay the dividend, mm -hmm. in the year when you don't, does, does this will have an impact? I okay, don't think it has an impact. Does this theory have an impact on the company share price? That is, in case you pay the dividend, the share price increase. Okay, I don't think this theory has an impact on the share price. Okay, the rest of your theory. I don't think it has an impact on the company uh, share price. Hmm. Because whether you pay or you don't pay the dividend, okay, the result is going to be the same. Because you did, if you don't pay the dividend, it means you are investing money in somewhere else, okay, which may decrease the share price, okay. Now, if you don't pay, if you, if you do pay the dividend, okay, if you do pay the dividend, okay, that sounds good to the market, to the shareholder, okay, the share price is therefore be increasing. So okay, I don't think it has uh, any impact on the share price, whether you pay or don't pay the dividend. So I actually don't think that it has an impact, okay? Okay, that's on the, let's see your theory. You pay the dividend, okay, once you, you are able to take care of the uh, investment need of the project, of the investment capital required, okay? What is the capital required in this particular uh, uh, investments, okay? Can we be able to afford it, okay? Do we have the capital uh, to be able to pay off that dividend, okay? But before you pay uh, the dividend, okay, before you pay the dividend, you will have to consider, okay, before you pay the dividend, you have to consider how much of the capital do we also invest in those projects, okay? How much capital do we invest in in the project? You only pay the dividend based on what is remaining, okay? Based on what is the, what is the remainder, what is the, what's, what's the remaining, okay? <clears throat> that's on the residual theory, okay? That's on uh, the residual theory. The dividend, residual theory. You pay the dividend from what is remaining, okay? The residual. Look at the term here, it is what is remaining. There's a term here, okay? So pay the dividend upon taking care of the investment, upon taking care of uh, the investment, okay? That's when you pay the dividend, okay? Upon what is remaining. Questions so far? 
don't forget the examiner is not is going to ask you okay one of the questions that the examiner can ask you okay uh, is to um generally okay uh this theory okay or other among the different different theories okay one or other what is the impact okay of the different theories on the share price what is the impact or what's the influence of the company dividend theory or policy on the company share price okay so you are going to be discussing each of the theory okay this theory what does it state okay this theory what does it state okay uh, with regard to in relation okay uh, to the dividend theory in relation to the dividend theory in relation to the share price okay so that is how i think we shall see one of the questions that the examiner has asked in the past okay uh, we have been asked okay what are the factors okay uh, uh, what are the theories okay indirectly the question was a very indirect question Brebinas discuss the theories of the dividend in relation to their impact on the share price to the impact on the share price okay that's on first two theories okay now to propose that we take a break okay then we come back okay so Mahir <coughs> sorry let me take Mahir Yes, sir. We can take a break. Yeah, we can take 20 minutes. Hey, 20 minutes. <laughs> hey, okay, we meet at 7.20. Yeah, yes, at 7.20. Okay, we meet at 7.20. And don't forget, today we have the mode watch is question. And so uh, after that, uh, we discuss another theory. Then we shall do the mode which is question. Okay? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, so let's meet at 7.20. <laughs> Okay, welcome back. <coughs> the next theory, okay, the dual timing. <coughs> the next theory, dual theory is called the traditional view. The traditional view. And the traditional view is simply we're trying to see or we're trying to to say or the what its uh, tenants are is that when it comes to paying the dividend, when it comes to paying the dividend. Uh, the main concern the manual shall be having is what is the implication of us paying this dividend on the share price? Okay, what's gaining the implication of us paying this dividend on the share price? Okay, as well as on the cost of capital. Okay, so more or less, okay, if I was to take you back to the the dividend valuation model, <clears throat> just take you back a bit, and um, the dividend valuation model. We see that peanuts, okay, okay, as per the dividend valuation model. We say that the peanut, okay, is equal to d naught one plus g, okay. Uh, we divide by cost of equity equals minus g, okay. This will see that, and we went ahead and say that the cost of, cost of equity, therefore, okay, is d naught, okay, is d naught uh, one plus g. We divide by uh, P naught plus G. Okay. <clears throat> so in short, when it comes to paying the dividend, when it comes to paying the dividend, you will have to consider what is going to be the impact of the payment of dividends. Okay. What's going to be the impact of paying the dividends? Okay. Of course, on the P naught on the share price. Okay. Was the impact of that dividend on the cost of equity? Okay. So you will have to consider. Okay. At the end of the day, if we adopt this particular policy of either increasing the dividend or decreasing the dividend, okay, what is going to be the impact it shall be having on the peanut? Or the going to be the impact to be having on the peanut, okay, of the market, the share price, as well as on the company, uh, on the cost of the required little return on the equity. Because at the end of the day, okay, uh, the D note will have an impact on the cost of equity and will have an impact on the peanut, the market value of the shares. Okay? So before the company do pay the dividend, before the management uh, decide to adopt a given policy, okay, they will have to consider what is going to be the impact of this policy on the peanuts, okay, on the cost of equity, okay, and by implication on the market value of the shares of that company. Okay, that is on the old factors, simply the traditional theory, okay, in the traditional theory, trying to observe, okay. What is giving the impact of this particular part? What is giving the impact of this particular uh, uh, theory? Okay, this particular policy we want to adopt 
on the share price, okay? So in case, for example, just assume that that, that can happen, okay? Uh, that in case we decrease the dividend, okay? In case we decrease the dividend, and, the, and this might seem to be something bad, okay? If it is possible for you as a manager to convince the market, to convince the shareholder, that hey, today we have paid you, or this year we have paid you less dividends. However, these are the, this is where you're going to put your money in. If you convince the market that is going to be that, that, that is the right thing, then actually the market might take it to be a positive positive, and that might have an impact on the, required, the cost of equity, and by implication, the market value of the share of the company, okay? So either way, okay, it does not mean that uh, a decrease in dividend, a decrease in the dividend is going to be something bad, okay? It can also be something good, okay? In case, for example, we are trying to just try it, okay, by saying that, hey, we are going to decrease the dividend, however, the decrease is, rather, we are decreasing because we want to invest in project A, project B, or project C, okay? So try to observe what was the impact of, uh, of the decrease or the increase on the payout that the market, the share price, as well as on the cost of equity. Okay, so that's on the traditional theory. Think about that. Okay, is that straightforward? Okay, try to observe the impact of the uh, dividends. Okay, on the share price as well as on the uh, required rate of return. Okay. <clears throat> So in case you increase the dividend, it does not mean that that's, that's going to be good for the company, okay? If you decrease the dividend, it does not mean that that's going to be bad for the company. So if you're therefore, if this theory can either go away, okay? So the impact of the share price, uh, the impact of the, uh, the, the theory impact of the share price can either go away. It can either be something good or something bad. So it can be positive or negative. So either way, okay? The next theory is called the MM. Uh, dividend in later was a theory, okay? It's called the Milan and Morgliani, okay? So in fact, so in fact was uh, the Milan Morgliani or MM, uh, dividend in later was a theory, okay? Dividend in later was a theory, okay? Now, Milan and Morgliani, okay? <coughs> These are two uh, uh, economists, okay? Let's see that at the end of the day, okay? So either you pay the dividend or you don't pay the dividend, okay? It does not matter, okay? If, for example, okay, if, for example, as a company, okay, you have shareholders, okay, you have shareholders who did want to be paid the dividend, okay, assume that as a company, you have shareholders who did want to be paid dividend. These are individuals, they consider the dividend as a supplementary income, okay, these are dividend, these are shareholders who do consider the dividend as a supplementary income, okay. If that company don't pay dividend, then of course shareholders, they have to look for a way of, of making their own dividend, okay? Now, how do that happen? They can be able to make their own dividend by selling off a stick of, okay, a number of shares in, a number of shares they own uh, to equivalent to the amount of dividend they wanted. The next question is that, why would the company not want to pay the dividend? Okay, the company may not want to pay the dividend uh, because they do have, okay, or they do want to make the investment in some other project. Okay, therefore, if the company, let me just show through some simple math, okay, what the theory uh, is trying to tell us. <clears throat> in example, we have two scenario, okay, scenario one, okay, where the company is not paying the dividend, okay, so here the amount of dividend, okay, is zero. And the company profit, let's call the company profit for that year, okay, was let's say 10 million. So the reason why the company is not paying the dividend is because they want to invest this money in products, in value added projects, okay? Now, once the company invests in this project, what's going to happen? The share price, of course, is going to increase, okay? There'll be an increase in the company's share price. In scenario two, okay, the company, assume the company pays the entire 10 million to the shareholder, okay? That means, therefore, there's zero to invest, okay? So in the project, there's zero investment, okay? However, don't forget the shareholder already have the 10 million in the project, in their pocket, okay? They have the 10 million already in their pocket, okay? So already, they, it means they have the money, okay? That implies, therefore, they will be having the dividend, but the capital gain component, as you can see, this component is about the capital gain part and increase the share price. Now, if the company pay the dividend, it means therefore the money goes to the dividend side, okay, on the dividend yield side. Now you can see therefore today already, okay, if you pay the dividend, it means the don't forget the return to the shareholder, okay, the return to the shareholder, 
okay, is made of the dividend plus the capital gain. If you don't pay the dividend, then here it's zero, okay, then here it's zero. However, the P1 is increasing. If you pay the dividend, don't forget the P, the share price, more or less like here, this component is gained, is gained it, is, it will be unaffected. However, we do have a value for the dividend, okay. So you see that it's going to be, it does not matter whether you pay the dividend or you don't pay the dividend, okay. At the end of the day, the total return to the shareholder uh, remain the same. I was saying, in case we have a scenario here, it's scenario one, okay. The shareholder in scenario one here, who want the dividend, don't forget in scenario one, there was no dividend, zero. So in case you have shareholder who want the dividend, what can they do, okay? If, for example, okay, uh, the share price increased from, they wanted, let's say, $2 per share, okay? $2 per, this is the dividend they wanted, okay? The share price will increase, for example, from 50 to 52, okay? They increase from 50 to 52, okay? That means, therefore, okay, the capital gain they have earned is two dollars, equivalent to the dividend they wanted. Okay, equal to two. Let me therefore, if they want the two dollar dividend, they can sell shares worth the two dollars. Okay, they can go to the market and sell the shares worth the two dollars. Don't forget their investment still remain at fifty, but they do get the dividend equal to two by disposing of uh, some of the shares equal to two dollars. Okay. That's what I mean. So at the end of the day, if you pay the dividend, you do get the two dollars dividend. Okay, part of your D here. Okay, if you don't pay the dividend, the P one is fifty two minus fifty, give us the two dollars. So at the end of the, the total return to the shareholder, whether you pay the dividend or you don't pay the dividend, whether you take the dividend or you don't take the dividend, it has no impact on the share price at all. Okay, it has zero impact on the share price. Actually, now these two dollars they have made here. Don't forget the, they are making this dividend from the sale of shares. They are making the two dollar dividend from the sale of shares, okay? Now this is what we thought was the home made dividend, okay? This is what we thought was the home made dividend, okay? The other assumption, okay, that we do make in this theory, okay, is that, don't forget to say that the share price increased from 50, okay, to increase from 50 to 52. And if the, share, the, the shareholder wanted the two as the dividend, then what do you do? And you cannot dispose a fraction of the shares. It assumes, okay, that this theory, we are making an assumption that you have a call fraction ownership of shares, okay? What we call the fraction ownership. That it is possible for an investor to, to, in, to dispose a fraction of the shares, okay? So in case they want to dispose two dollars, that is getting possible. If they want to dispose three dollars, it is possible in this market, okay? We assume the market is to be what we call perfect, okay? We are in perfect relations, okay? At the same time, as they dispose the two dollars, they don't incur any cost, okay? So there's no transaction cost, okay? There's no cost of uh, to making those transactions, okay? At the same time, they don't pay the tax, okay? So at the end of the day, the total return can be the same, okay? There's no higher tax on the capital gain, there's no higher tax on the dividend, uh, there's no cost you'll be incurring as you dispose of your previous investment. So at the end of the day, it is net off, okay? So it does not matter what alternative that you're going to take, okay? Whether to reinvest the money or to pay the dividend, at the end of the day, the total return to the shareholder remains constant. It's only the form. One of them will be involved the dividend, okay, actual dividend from the company to the shareholder. The other one is going to be out of capital gain from the increase in the share price. But otherwise, the total return to the shareholders remains the same. In scenario where the company don't pay a dividend, the shareholder in that case can be able to make their own dividend, okay, which we're referring to as the so-called the homemade dividend, okay, by disposing of uh, a shares equivalent or a, or a fraction of share equivalent to the amount of dividend they wanted. The two are going to be the same, whether we pay the dividend or you don't, uh, uh, you uh, reinvest the money, okay, since there's no cost you have been carrying, whether you sell a share or you're going to be paid the dividend. At the same time, there's no tax on the capital gain and there's no tax on the dividend. So in conclusion, what does MM say, okay? So in conclusion, Mila Modigliani says that it is irrelevant for the management to concentrate on the dividend payment. Why? Because when they pay the dividend or you don't pay the dividend, you have no impact on the other shareholder. 
So it is of it is irrelevant, okay, for you as management, okay, to start to concentrate on the deliberate. Okay, it has no it makes no sense, okay. So don't do that, okay. So uh, you as management, okay, stick to stick to decisions that do add value to the shareholder. Stick to decisions that do add value to the shareholder. Okay, that is what MMC. So the policy the uh, the company has on the dividend has zero impact, has no impact on the total return to the shareholder. Okay, the core dividend irrelevancy theory. It is irrelevant. Okay, the policies on the dividend is irrelevant. That's MM without. Uh, that's MM uh, 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 dividend irrelevancy theory. Hope it's clear. Question? Okay, if there's no question, 